Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies, and I'm going again. Why don't you go? Woo! I can barely talk, still under the influence of a little bit of the sickness, but I'm loving this! You're loving what? Log of Woolen! Log of Woolen 12 year cast strength. We got the 2017. Natural. They cast say strength. it's so good. Let's see if there's any difference between it and the 2014 edition. Mm. Let's yeah, test it. Test it! That was terrible. <laughs> like a seizure. Okay. <laughs> Log of Ulan 12. Now, I bought the 2014 edition. Mm. I mean, it was just last year in 2017 yeah. sometime I found it. So, it, it was a dusty bottle sitting on a shelf. And I picked it up. We just opened it. We just opened it because I was saving this. This is a $100 bottle. Mm. Me and Bart have a ongoing we do. Uh, wager. Wager. Friendly. Friendly wager. Yeah, which is just right or wrong, but whoever's wrong has to get the other one a gift. And the gift is? Well, several years ago, we, right. it was a $100, $100 bottle. bottle of whiskey. So several years ago, Scotch. we started a, a, this friendly wager. Bart said that by the year 2020, right. fully autonomous vehicles would be available to the public for under $50,000. Bam. You get in and say, take me where I want to go. Yeah. Boom. Does it. I said, no way. I said, definitely. So... We're getting closer. I don't think it's... The only thing that scares me is the, the Tesla Model 3. Mm, yeah, but there's a lot of competition. It's not fully autonomous yet. Sure. Though, but it is under $50,000. Right. But Detroit, several car companies in Detroit are working on it as well. Yeah, they won't beat... They're not going to beat Tesla to it. I don't know. I'll guarantee... Uh, that's Google. another wager. Google's I'll guarantee you... No, I'll guarantee you... Uh, Tesla will be the first to market with right. a fully autonomous. I, I wouldn't. I won't go against you there because <laughs> they already have the videos where the guys, by law, are they've, sitting behind the wheel and it's driving them. Yeah, they've already logged millions of miles. I know. So, yeah. yeah, I mean they. Nobody I, else is. I, everybody I else is behind the. Cars. I think I've won already. You, you could have, but, but I don't think they've officially sold a car yet. The Chupacabra. Well, they don't have fully autonomous yet. They don't. Okay. There, it's a category one or something they call it. It's it's right below it. Fully autonomous is the next. Okay, we're but, close enough that you purchased a bottle thinking it would be the gift. Well, I bought that. Um, I'd heard good things about Lagavulin twelve cast string, and I saw it on the shelf. And I was like, and I, I think, matter of fact, it was like ninety four dollars. Yeah, ninety five dollars. So I was like, I'll get it. And with the back thought in the back of my head, if Bart if Bart, I lose, all this right. is it. You you love Pete. Oh. I know you like the Lagavulin. Yes, and they're limited editions, these so, natural cast strengths. This year, though, the 2017 edition is getting rave reviews. Delicious. We're going to tell you more about that. Um, Phil over at Whiskey Wednesday was the first one I saw review it. He loved it. I mean, I think he gave it a 10 out of 10. Smart man. Um, Roy, Aquaviti Vitae, had also picked up a bottle, and he commented just how good it was. Another smart man with a good-looking, sharp beard. I saw it, I had seen it in our liquor store, and I thought, man, based on those two recommendations, I've got to get it. Right. So, I you, bought it. You then dropped it off here telling well, me nothing. I tasted it first. Right. Yeah, and I agreed. It's pretty good. Yeah. I gave it to you, not saying anything. I just said, hey, here's a new Lagavulin I picked up. Why don't you try it? What was the first thing you said? Unbelievably good. <laughs> So, we'll, so we'll, we'll give you the taste notes in a bit. But I, I thought, let, I got the 14 edition. Let's see, does the 17 stand out? Although yeah. I've heard the 14 is a good edition. You mentioned, hey, I got the 2014 never been open. I was like, oh my God, we've got to see how it compares. So we've since, got it kind of opening up. Since now. it was not open, though, we did open the 14. We've poured them. Yep. The 14 is on our left. Yep. The 17 edition is on our right. We're letting this one air a little bit. I I've, say we come to it. I've then. got coin 202 and 203. Oh, 204, 205. <laughs> These are whiskey hats. Now, the the the, the uh, caveat here is that there can be subtle differences. You know, this is kind of an annual release. There's no sherry cask influencing on these. These are just ex bourbon casks. And they're delicious. Like a majority of well, Scotch is. I haven't tried 2014. Lagavulin 16 is a very very popular whiskey. It's sherry cask influenced. Right. The Distillers Edition is sherry cask influenced. Yes. This is Lagavulin, what people say, as it should be. With no wine casking influence. Okay. This is Lagavulin in an ex bourbon barrel. Sure. I like that. They presented come out a cast with their strength. eight year that's now going to be a regular as well. That's true. Yeah. I love and it's that. not. It's not sherry cask right. influenced either. It's Young and powerful, like me. 
Um, a Scotch God shout out real quick. We just did uh, a live stream with It's Bourbon Night. Right. Good show. Right about the 39 minute mark, there's a knock on the door. And my mom was had come over and she was checking on us. And you didn't know she was coming over. No. Uh -uh. I could tell you were surprised. Yeah. No so, one's ever even come in on a live show before. Well, no. I don't no, think so. That but was a first. Scott's mom, my mom, had made an appearance on our Glenn Live at 12 video early on. It's like episode number seven, six, seven, or eight. Go watch it. It's priceless. His so, mom is awesome. My mom comes in, sits down. We were on the Pikesville Rye at the time. She's got to try a little sample of it. One, mm -hmm. you know, one of the best ryes out there. Ebhead 2424. Mm. He's a Patreon supporter. Yeah. Patreon Scotch God. Right. He comments. He says, lovely mum. Mum. What's her favorite whiskey? My mom does not drink. She handled that well, though. <laughs> she's getting better. Yeah. Yeah, if my, you watch the first episode that she's on the show, you can tell because she feels like we lied to her about the kitchen spices right. and the baking yeah, bread. With the she's like, the what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, she's great. Yeah, my mom does not drink. She Maybe at Christmas time she has a sip of champagne. Does she like enjoy wine? No. No. Uh, okay. My mom has uh, what she calls nine drunken raisins every day. Which she's read in some health magazine years ago. They're raisin soaked in gin. Really? Supposedly good for you. So every morning she has nine drunken raisins. Wow. But that's it. That's the we extent need create, of her uh, We need to create a product based. called like nine whiskey raisins <laughs> and put them in a jar and sell them as a health product. Yeah. We'll make a killing. <laughs> nine whiskey raisins. <clears throat> the whole jingle could be that, that whole, uh, they heard it on the grape vine. <laughs> Sorry, you're getting me right. down a trip. Broke out a manga shirt. The Eye of Sauron manga shirt is what I call it. So that has come out special. Now let's do look. What's oh, our uh, ABV? 2017 is on, on our right. 56.5%. Okay. Well, right. 54.4. 50, so a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Ooh. 54, 56. I was wondering if they were going by year, but they're not, because this is the 2017, and it's 56. Dang, the nose Noses on this are, 2017 is just delicious. No, uh, bo Both of them nose extremely Ridge, similar. A little barbecue, the smoke, the peat, the earthiness. Yeah, they smell the same to me. Oh, really? I, gotta, well, I haven't even smelled the 14. Wait. Yeah. Brininess, mm -hmm. peat, vanilla. A little bit less smoke on the uh, 2014. A little bit more brine, a little bit less smoke. You're more of the peat yeah. uh, connoisseur yeah. than me. I mean, they're definitely. I mean, you can definitely tell it's log of woolen. You think there's less peat? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a little bit more of a briny smoked salmon. I get a little bit more of the sea. I think the 17 is maybe a little bit stronger on the nose. Yeah, I get a little mm -hmm. bit more of the sea, a little bit more of the sweetness. The savoriness on that 14. We're going to let that open up, keep the whiskey hat off. I mean, you, there's no doubt, though, that they're, they're special Lagavulins. Vanillas and citruses. Right. That's what's always amazing with the Lagavulin. They do such a good job that the peat is pronounced, it's strong, but it doesn't completely diminish everything else that's in the glass. Yeah. And that's what I like with my peated whiskeys. To me, you have to bring something besides just peat. I like the the vanillas, the citruses, the sherry cask influences, the I do dark too. fruits. I like I the other too. stuff in there with it. I like a big peat punch in the face, but I got to admit, when I can pick up those subtleties too, there's some craftsmanship involved. And that that is a skill, and it definitely then starts to distinguish between this peat to that peat to this one. I was thrilled when they came out with the eight year, and mm -hmm. I still need to run down and get get that eight year that we keep seeing, because I'm I do not have an eight year on my shelf. I've got everything else. Hmm. You know what's funny? Now that I've nosed both of them, they've kind of commingled. Yeah, they're very similar. They are. The 2017 palette is just rich vanillas with that peat, just like on the nose, smoke, campfire smoke, citruses, sugar, 
Mm. Wow. <laughs> that was just pleasant. This should cure me. Um, boy, I need to come into this like five times. Campfire smoke is a nice way to describe it. Because that very first flash of peat definitely felt like I was right at the fire. And maybe even had like a like a little nice piece of meat that I was toasting over that fire. And those rich drippings were coming off. And you get that savoriness with the campfire at the same time. And then it transitioned. And I almost wanted to say, no, 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 stay, stay at the fire. But then I was loving what it moved into, which was some of the earthiness. So I'll have to come back in on it. Go now ahead. see the sweetness. Mm. Soon as I, soon as I take a little bit, a little sip, and I'm moving it around my palate, the sweetness is. I mean, you can detect the sweetness in it right off the bat. The sweetness on the forefront, followed by the peat for me. Mm. I'm really kind of concentrating just on the 17 on the first here. Me too. We'll come into this one. I haven't even touched. I'm going to just let it air. See, this is where I, the, I easily, I'm spending an hour with this. And I almost feel like I've got a You're rush on 14. even here. No, I'm not. Was that on the left? Yeah, I haven't touched it. I nosed it. I'm oh, okay. Air. Okay. That's why I pushed it off. I, got you. I haven't even I, I saw you set it down and push it off. I thought you were sipping it. I'm like, that's the 14. I've nosed it, but I haven't <laughs> sipped it yet. The, uh, the finish... Still lingering. This is going to be a minute, minute and a half linger, if not more. The the peat hangs in there. But it's kind of a... The peat on the finish is a lighter peat. Not quite citrus, but not really earthy like an Ardbeg. It just kind of... A little bit of the ashiness hangs around, but it's not even a heavy. And then I get... Beautiful, warming pipe tobacco. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and that is just such a pleasing, pleasing finish. That, that That's why this would take me, I could do an ounce for an hour because the finish is, is probably th not three-fourths, I would say, though. It's at least a good half of my enjoyment. Is just still picking up this finish as it slowly slips away and yet lingers around getting lesser and lesser but really bringing in those real warm nice pipe tobacco peat cleanness crispness and that's just the finish mm. very good neat 56.5 oh. percent yeah. and you can't tell it oh it's just a work of art i mean you can tell it's hot it's strong but it also doesn't feel like it needs water mm. at 56.5%. Mm. <clears throat> I added a drop here. I'm going to move on to the 2014. And we should add a little bit of a palate cleanser maybe wow. in between. But You want a cracker? I, I got no, an oat I, cake from Roy if you want. Okay. Wow. Um, again, the savoriness, the campfire on the forefront. There is a middle palate that gives me more of that peat moss flavor, a little phenolic, not not really creosote, not really iodine, but maybe hints. And then that's when it shifts right into that sweet pipe tobacco. God, and I'm right back in heaven. I'm telling you, phenomenal. I was going to say one year, you, I don't know if you were saying it's a light peat overall, but you said in some of your trends, a light peat went into something. Overall, it's kind of a medium peat. It's not uh, as, as heavy as a Laphroaig or an Artbeg. Right. But not a light peat. It's, it's somewhere in between there. You know, I would guess 30 parts per million, 35, somewhere in that range. I couldn't tell you the PPMs. And you're right. If someone that had never had this had it, this would be probably ashtray smoke to them. Yeah. I mean, what I call, what I mean by a lighter peat is that it's, it's not that punch in the face, Pete. It's just beautiful fillingness of that campfire smoke on the palate right off the bat. A little bit of pepperiness, that savoriness. And then as it transitions into the finish, right before it transitions, you get a little bit, maybe a touch of that earth. 
but it's not the creosotes that you'll get from some. It's not the heavy iodines that you get from. Mm -hmm. I love those flavors. It sounds weird, but I love those. That's what I mean by it feels a little bit like a lighter peat. It's a subtler. It still allows a lot of sweetness in there. There's a lot of sweetness at the same time. Velvetiness on the cheek. But when it transitions to that finish, and that's what it did the first time I tried it. I remember sipping it going, yeah, this is good. This is interesting. Swallowed, and then I was like, oh, my. Oh, my. I think the peak going now, I went back. Uh, twenty. I started 20. I ate a little bit of a cracker. Came into the 2014. Almost got a little bit of a lime or a sit, more uh, lemon, citrus, mm -hmm. lime type nose with the peak. Going back to the 17, the 17 did feel a little bit heavier peat wise mm. on the nose, which is what you said originally. Oh, man. I'm moving into the 2014 now. You know, after you sent me this to try and I went out and, well, you actually told me, because I told my wife right away, this is the Christmas bottle I want. And then you'd said you'd seen the one gone from Auburn Spirit, but you'd seen one at ABC. And I told her, go get it. And she did. I even sent her a picture. I'm like, please get this for Christmas. <laughs> 2014 is um, almost a little bit harsher, more cigarette ash smoke, and a little bit more uh, citrus sweet, not necessarily as much vanillas. Mm. Well, you are way right. The first, <laughs> you're way right. Mm -hmm. The first indication is a citrusness that caught me off guard. Huh. That's interesting. I don't get as much of the savoriness of the campfire. I get a citrus on the forefront, and it and um, a little bit of the grain. I feel that there's more grain notes in there, rather than a vanilla sweetness. Mm -hmm. I feel it's more grain. Hmm. Yeah, it's still very good, but I can see the subtle differences. And I think the peat is just a little sharper. Not, not maybe not harsh, but just a little bit. Maybe harsh, just a little bit more. Ooh, there's just Not a, yet. it's almost like an alcohol spark on the front. It's yeah. not as smooth as mm -hmm. the 17. Yep. There's a little bit more heat on my tongue. Let me see. If I didn't know they were both 12 years, I would think it maybe was a little younger. Yeah. And that was what I was getting. Huh. All right, it transitions in the finish. Look. Pleasingly here, I still get a little bit of what I feel like is pipe tobacco. It's that same yeah. sweet smoke kind of finish on it. But what is definitely distinct is the beginning is, is very much different. The open is very much different from the 2017. Citrus to savory, mm. similar smokes, but of that harsh hotness, the heat on my tongue, whereas the 17 was... I don't even feel like I need to add water to it. Mm. I don't want to yeah. add water to it. I'm afraid it'll it'll. I it better down. though. I did. I did add a splash to the I 17. I like to do one drop. I better add a splash to the 14. I'm doing a deal where I don't handle the uh, dropper because I may be contagious. No, here's uh, the. Excuse that's me. Disgusting. All right. Here's the interesting deal. I actually think the water may do the 2014 <laughs> some yeah. good because of that 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 heat, that shock of the alcohol at the beginning. Whereas I'm almost concerned that it's going to water down the 2017. Now here's, I well, still love adding the water though. Yeah, here's what I wanted to see though, because everybody is raving about the 2017, and it's people that have had these other editions, mm -hmm. which we haven't had. So I wanted to see. Okay, is there a difference? That, make, that is making this 2017 edition stand out. Yes. Preliminary here, just going back and forth. Yeah, the 2017 is better than the 2014. Yeah. 2014 is still good. Very good. Now, just, uh, just a, I mean, rough score here, like the 2014 is a 91. This is a 93. 90. I mean, I'm, I'm just, the, I'll, I'll, no, I'll finalize I'm that, but I'm just saying oh, this one yeah. is a notch better. Right. I'm going to let the water. Still, 2014 still good. Yeah. 2017 Cut above. really good. Cut above. Yeah. I'm not sure where I'm scoring yet. I'm, I'm yeah. probably about with you with the 2014. Very interesting, though. That is a good comparison to see. Mm -hmm. And I keep talking about now, 
we're gonna do a blind peated shootout soon. I want to do sixteen. Well, and the sherry. We've been talking the sherry, right? Also, I want to do need sixteen to. of them. That's a hard, hard hit because the peat takes you over. We talked about only doing eight, but you know what I was going to point out where you just said the twenty fourteen almost God, feels like it needs good. a splash of water. Yes, it's a lower ABV. That's than a this crazy. One. I know, and that's crazy. You're right. It's like a couple points lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from fifty six to fifty four. Yeah. See, even here, I get a little bit more of the grain now on the nose. Which, on the 14? Yep, the 14, I'm getting the grain. I get a little bit of the PPM that's in there. I can tell there's a peat. Beautiful peat. Smokiness. An earthiness. Beautiful nose. And that citrus is able to make itself known there as well. Now, with the water... See, I'm not getting too much difference on the nose still. Or back to I can tell you I just don't get as much of the grain grain on the uh, the 2017 I get a little bit more vanilla and cream I'm going back in on the new 2017 mm. edition here mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah that I think they did a much better job that bourbon cask influence that those vanillas mm -hmm. maybe even caramel a little caramel coming through with that Lagavulin peat. The 2017 edition, I think, like I say, that bourbon cask, the, the vanillas are better. The creaminess is better. There's more creaminess to it. The peat melds with it better. The 2014, although still good, not as much of the vanillas, and the peat is just a little bit sharper. Alcohol bite seems a little bit sharper, even. It totally does. That's amazing. <clears throat> I mean, if I if I blind tasted, and maybe we'll need to do that, like maybe they're in, I would have definitely thought that this is a higher ABV and yeah. that that's an alcohol spark on the front of it. But this, even back to back, without even a cleanser in between, feels more mellow, a little more refined, mm -hmm. smoother. Whereas that has that, it still has that first little kick of a. And that, yeah, whatever they've done here, maybe you're right. It's maybe it's the bourbon cast it was in. Um, I can see, I, again, the 2014 is delicious, tasty, but yeah, the 2017 brings it. It brings it. Mm. Here, and I told you before we started filming, the 2017, I will not miss a, a limited release from this, of the Lagavulin again. Yeah. This will be me looking for the 2018, the 2019, the 2020. I mean, this is... This will probably become one of the first limited releases or the yearly releases that I will seek out. You do it with the George T. Stagg B Tax. Mm, yeah. I will do it with these mm -hmm. because I enjoy this. When you said, hey, I've got a 2014, I was like, oh my God, that's great. We got to do them together. <laughs> and and what we're able to do here is is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I just went back to the 2014 that does. The alcohol's a little bit sharper in it. Uh, more citrus sweetness with it instead of vanillas. Mm -hmm. And like I said, peat is still just a little bit sharper, a little bit harsher. It is. 2017 really more, seems more aged, more refined, more vanillas, more cream. Yet smoother. Mm -hmm. The finish is longer. I do get a little bit of the pipe tobacco in both on the finish. Mm. Mm -hmm. But especially at the open, I get a distinct difference. I'm just scoring the 2017. That's what this review is about. I gave it a score here. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. First of all, I liked your 91. I'm going to put the 2014 out of 91. It might have been higher if I wasn't comparing it to this 2017. I almost feel like I've done it a disservice. But well, 91 head -to -head, is still 91 a good 91 is a great score, but head-to-head -head with this 2017, which just takes it a level above. So... I'm putting the uh, 2017, <laughs> it's so early in the year for me to give such a good score. This What's is that got to do with it? Well, I don't know. It's just early. And I feel like, wow, am I crazy? Well, it's early. It's What's 95. that got to do with a whiskey score? Probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I don't... 
At, it's a 95. I give it a 94. That's good. I don't, have I have the, I ever scored anything in, above a 94? I don't know. I don't think I have. We'd have to check the uh, Somebody website. will know. Somebody will know. And, but that's what I'm saying. I guess, now. I mean, I'm saying this is the best whiskey already, and it's... And it's so here's January. my proposition then to you on this 2017 bottle that's halfway gone. I will trade you for your new bottle. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's worth a try. Yeah, nope. No, I thought you were going to tell me you are going to leave that half open one here. <laughs> like just, no. just, no. just out of niceness. Even me, I have contemplated picking up another bottle. Mm. There's still a couple bottles on the shelves. Where? Uh, Auburn still has one. Calling them today. Mm -hmm. They met, well, the fact is, I bought, they had one bottle in, which I bought, and then they got, I think, two more bottles in. And I think you got one of those, and they were gone. But there's another one on the shelf again, so I think they're still... But I was whiskey shopping over the weekend and hit a couple of stores where I had seen it, and they were, it was gone, you know, at those. But I have contemplated, at the $120 range, so let's talk that. Is it worth it, $120? Yep. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Very Definitely. much so. That is interesting though. It's gone up to 120 where the 2014 only cost you about 94. Well, that was on sale. Oh, the really? Or the, well, no, I had seen I I had seen this um in other stores for 120 to 130. Okay. I think the store that I found it in had had it on the shelf since 2014 when it was $95 and they still had $95 on it. So it was dusty and you picked mm -hmm. it up. Yeah, fact is, you can still see a little bit of dust on top of it. Got it. Yep, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah this is a they, they had never raised their prices to match the market with the rest of them. Got so. it. This is a keeper. Um, I'm going to have to double down on this as well because I am curious if even 2018 release is going to be able to hold a candle to it. And it'll be one that I will probably go to for special events, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this is not something, I, this is this is going to be that bottle that I think maybe I look back on and go, man, kind of like you're still saving a little bit of your BTAC uh, Stag 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think this could be that for me, so I definitely need to go score another bottle. I did just go back to the 14. I got more of the grassiness on the yeah. nose right from the glasses I was taking a sip that you were getting. Our traveling dummy for the week goes out on Instagram. Uh, to K at KWK0809 and he had sent us a picture of our coins with a uh, Glendronic 1992 edition. That's a beautiful pick actually. Yep. And that's that's a nice pick. Everything there looks golden and rich including our coins. Uh, and this was a, a 1992 um, limited edition or um, it was for professional Danish whiskey retailers bottle at 48 percent limit it was limited to 1500 bottles wow and i would uh wow 2014 love to try that one 2014 still good here i'm still getting some of that pipe pipe tobacco on the finish so if you like that pipe tobacco ishness you're getting it in both just 2017's cut above that is nice that is nice well and i'm pretty sure that kwk is our patreon supporter as well kurt right I think you're right, but yeah. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and speak, so speaking of patron, Patreon. Yeah. Patreon. A couple more $1 Patreon supporter shout-outs. Yes, yes. $1. So raster, you don't need to put your earplugs in. Yeah. <laughs> Don McClure. McClure, love them. Also known as the walleye killer. Ooh, it means he's a fisherman. Yep. Well, probably. Unless that's code. We're assuming. <laughs> Uh, Don McClure came in as a $1 supporter. Greatly appreciate it. Great help. And you know who else? The Quig. Love the Quig. Food Quig. Food Quig. Food Woo. Quig. Food Quig. Uh, Food Quig's getting famous. If yep. you end up during a live stream, you got to take a bathroom break. It's called the Quig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to take a Quig. We did that and he Boom. commented. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I saw that. Even he commented. <laughs> hey, somebody had to take a Quig. Yeah. Pull yeah. the Quig. Pull the Quig. <laughs> Love it. So yeah, the quig is that like also famous. could mean you have like a five or an eight hour live stream if you pull a quig. Yeah, that's true because he goes food, food. Yeah, he just gets on. He legendary. starts a live stream up and yep. just a lot of times interacts food, with people and talks and addresses comments coming in. We'll have a crowd on our live stream. All right, 
right? And and we'll we'll end the show, mm-hmm. and they don't want to leave. Right. They don't want to. They you can't shut the bar down with the dummy fans. So Quig throws his doors open. Uh-huh. Come on over. Yeah. They flood. It's like going home to Quig's house after you've left the dummy bar. Yeah. And they flood over, mm-hmm. and Quig keeps the party going all night long. Yeah. I wonder all if he has he ever fa- fallen long. asleep on camera. That would be hilarious. Hmm. If he just like went <clears throat> out and the live stream yeah. still on and people yeah, just yeah, stayed with here. him. People just stayed. Who cares if Quig's asleep? Keep the show going. <laughs> Eight in the morning, people are finally signing off and Quig's like, hey, <laughs> I love it. Go check out Quig's channel. He what is, was you had a Patreon comment? You was one of our patrons I commented did. about something. Rombout. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yep. Rombout had come on. Now this is after whoop, I hit a button and I made it disappear. All right. During our uh, New Year's Day show with Roy, Aqua Vitae, check him out. Roy had, had explained in, in wonderful terms about how many hours he was spending watching, in particular the dummies on YouTube way more than he was watching Netflix or some of the other services that he pays for. And he thought, you know what? I'm getting this for free. Let me pay a little something. He became a Patreon backer. Mm -hmm. So he mentioned it in those terms and just said, folks, if you see yourself spending some time watching the dummies, help them out. The show will always remain free. So it doesn't matter if you go to Patreon or not. But Rombout came in and said, quote, he sent a greetings. I guess I was talked into this by Roy, exclamation point, smiley face. Or was it just the good looks of Bart, exclamation point, who knows, smiley face. And I said, who's this Roy guy, ellipsis, got to point out the ellipsis, I love an ellipsis. Now Bart, on the other hand, is a stunning looking fellow. Ah, you are. With the legs for days. Legs for days. I'm 6'6". That's what they say. All right, let's wrap this baby up. We're wrapping it up. So go to patreon.com. Look up Scotch Test Dummies. You can support us for as little as a dollar. You can go to scotchtestdummies.com. Buy t-shirts. Buy our coins. Buy our Glen Cairns. Woo, I just realized I was going to wear my Broncos ball cap for this episode, and I forgot. I know, and I've been wearing my skull cap. Scotch it, you Scotch guys. Slauncha. Dummies. Dummies.